All right, what is going on, guys? Welcome back to the DS Asylum. I'm your Ward of the Mitchie Shrine, and I have not done that intro in a very long time. And today, we, as you can see on your screen, have a little tier list here. Now, for those of my Dragon Ball Legends viewers, you would know that not too long ago, Goresh made a video talking about the biases in Dragon Ball Legends when it came to characters. And I figured, that's a pretty neat, pretty neat idea. Why don't I try doing it for Izakai memories? So, as you can see here, we've got our tiers here where they have characters that I believe are significant biases from the developers. We have the positive bias, which are characters that are over-favored. We have the negative bias, which is characters that are under-favored. Reverse bias, which you'll understand once we get to. Positive outliers, which would be characters in either the negative or reverse bias tiers that are exceptionally good. And then the negative outliers, which would be characters from the positive bias that are just really not good. Now, you'll also notice that we do not have our skill fusions with the exception of two which we'll get into and there are still some characters down here that we are not taking into account jean and blong we are not talking about because they haven't been in the game long enough for me to really compare them to each other like we're coming up on one year and we have two of each both sets are pretty decent obviously the first set was better because it was their first ever release and it was the second anniversary but i mean the second set aren't bad either uh, the hero is here because i understand why we don't get a lot of heroes because she hasn't really become too big in the anime yet and there's only so much you can really do with this character. And then the Konosuba and Idolmaster units are collabs. However, you will notice that there is one collab in the negative bias tier. We'll get to that. So, one of the things that I want to talk about in terms of bias towards the game, or towards characters in the game, is the developers very obviously have, <clears throat> have favorites. And you can tell who those favorites are through this tier here. So we have Shuna, Milam, Shizu, Violet, Raphael, and Hinata. The amount of Violets and Raphaels is significantly lower than the amount of the other units here. We'll get into that. But Shuna and Milam are here strictly due to how many of them there are. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Shunas in the game. That is actually ridiculous. And for the most part, they're all pretty decent. This Water Shuna still gets used to this day because she's got a good orb change and an alt buff. This Idol Master Shuna is, well, I say Idol Master Shuna. Idol Shuna is still really good. She may only have a double alt swap as opposed to uh, Overlord Shizu's triple alt swap, but Synergy will always be a good buff. This Light Shuna is really good for burst teams that really just want to get an EX alt as quickly as possible. She's got her niche usage usages. Um, Vengeance Shuna is an interesting character, definitely not what I would call a top tier character, but you know, if you want to build a team around her defensively or offensively, you can do it. Um, Tempest Elite Shuna, very underrated I would actually say, because Pierce and Pierce Power are universal buffs, and then her orb change while limited to Tempest Elite, Tempest Elite is not exactly a small category, and even if she's the only one on your team with that category, she's still changing all of her own orbs. Definitely an underrated pick, uh, in my opinion. And this Shuna, the Ogre's Pride Shuna, like, she's not bad. <laughs> it's just like, you don't, you don't need this unit, but she's certainly not bad. But here's where things get really stupid. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve Milam Navas. If you wanted to release one of these Milams for each meta, you would have enough to go through an entire calendar year. That is absolutely ridiculous. This game is just about to reach three years old. That means an entire third of the game's release is just, oh, the, the entire game's releases are just Milam. Hello? And it's not like any of these Milams are particularly bad. Pretty good, okay, 
one of the big three, pretty good for a burst team, not terrible, and if you can skill fuse her, she'll be useful for newer players, not bad, you don't need her, but not bad, one of the big three, two of the big three are Milam's, by the way, still pretty good, okay, niche use, niche usage, and then this one, more good for newer players, but can still be pretty uh, good if you don't have a lot of options. 12 Milums. I would also like to point out that the positive bias tier has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 characters in it. The negative bias tier, which is only a handful of units larger, like a handful of actual units larger than the positive bias tier, both taking up 3 lines, has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28 units. Six units? Only a handful of, of slots less? 28 units. Only a handful of slots more. That should tell you exactly what this video is about. We get way too many of specific units. Shizu has a similar problem to Shuna. There's a lot of them. They're all pretty good. I mean, Shizu for the most part is kind of like meh. Overlord Shizu, I damn near put in the positive outlier while still being in the positive bias category simply because she is so far and away better than any other unit that tries to do what she does, it's ridiculous. Commander Shizu, you don't see her a lot, but if you have her, you you definitely have reasons to use her. The old fire Shizus, both the EX and the five star ones, can still be useful. Um, I've gotten some niche usages out of the world of fan or the is this world of fantasy or found of wisdom? I, I think she's on both, but the wind Shizu. Um, OG Shizu, I mean, not you're not really getting anything out of her, and neither the Valentine's Day Shizu. Builder of Magic Shizu, while gimmicky, is still decent. Like, you can still use her, she's still pretty good. And again, there's a decent amount of Shizus when you compare them to the rest of the characters in the game. Violet is here, because despite there only being three, every single one of them is weirdly good. Like, every single time a Violet comes out, she's among one of, if not just straight up, the best unit in the game. OG Fire Violet was the best DPS in the game until EX metas became a thing, and even then, because of their lack of fire units, she remained the best fire DPS unit until... Momiji? Megamine, I guess? But Megamine's a collab character. So if you don't include Megamine, since she's a collab character, then this Fire Violet was just the best Fire DPS unit until Momiji. I don't even understand how that's possible. <laughs> Warrior's Mind Violet is the weakest of the three, yet still useful for any team that you want to do crits with. She's got a self orb change. And she gives you crit, uh, crit resistance down, and I think something else on that as well. Fantastic unit. And then Visions of Coleus Violet. I don't need to tell you why Visions of Coleus Violet makes the positive bias tier. Because she's still, to this day, an entire year later, probably the best support unit in the entire game. Raphael. Specifically Raphael is... Um, an interesting case, because there's only two. Well, there's three, but... Yeah, the, the first one is in the negative outlier. These two are defining units of their eras. This light Raphael legitimately was the best DPS unit in the game, in the game's history, um, until the EX metas came out a couple months later. This Raphael... Again, do I need to explain why Vengeance Raphael is here? Do I honestly, even even in relation to the Vengeance team, she's broken. She's broken on a broken team. I don't even know how that's possible. <laughs> Hinata. We get a lot of Hinatas. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven Hinatas. Same as Shizu, actually. And Shuna. Wait, no, how many Shizu? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight Shizus. Seven Shunas, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, yes, yeah, seven. So Shuna and Hinata are top. Oh my. Are tied for their for the amount of characters or the amount of units they have. This entire tier, stop giving us these characters. Or at the very least, you can give us more Raphaels and Violets, but stop making them so much better than everything else in the entire game. But that pretty much explains the positive bias tier. I think you guys can see these characters are heavily favored by the developers, and it's like it's not even particularly close. The negative bias tier. The characters that are treated unfairly. We have one carrion. Whether it be summonable, free to play, is one carrion. Shinsha. There are five Shinshas in the game because we just got one for the current antagonist meta. Which is not in the list yet. Okay. 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 And the new one is okay. And the Shinshas, actually there's six Shinshas because there's, there's another free-to-play one from way back in the day. We don't get a lot of Shinshas when you think about the fact that this is a custom created character for the game. You would think that the developers would really push this character. I mean, she's Rimuru's daughter. That's a huge thing for the franchise, and they just don't do shit with her. It's almost like they were obligated to make a custom character, so they made Shinsha, but they didn't actually want to make Shinsha, so they try to keep her out of the game as much as possible. I don't think we've ever gotten a Shinsha for a major celebration either, except for the very first summonable Shinsha, which was part of the first anniversary. I, I don't really get what their vendetta against their own created character is, but whatever. Leon, there's three Leons, all of them suck. Every single, all three of them, they all suck. There's only one Adelman. Benimaru. We have a Benimaru in the positive outlier tier, which is the Tempest Elite Benimaru. A very underrated character. The other three suck. This is easily the second best, this um, Scarlet Bond one, and even he's just like not that great. First one, terrible. This one, one of the worst releases in the game's history. Soe, we again have him in a positive outlier um, from the Ogre's Pride meta, but the fact that there's only three Soe's, and mind you, only four Benny Marus throughout the entire history of this game, is ridiculous. These two Soe's are terrible. This one's skill fuse can be decent on like your vengeance team, but other than that, you're not using these characters at all. Shion, one of the most talked about shafted characters. One, two, three, four, five Shion's. She also has a protector. And good when she came out. Okay. Eh, not really. Pretty bad. And okay. But note how every single one of these characters, except this one, every single Shion except this one is a 5 star. We did not get an EX battle unit Shion until last month. Which is just stupid. What do you have against Shion? What, what do you have against the Big Titty Ogre? Genuinely. Hakuro, he has one summonable character. Ramaris, she has no summonable battle units. Dino, they both suck. Rain, this one sucks. This one is, it, it can be good. DeGruel, sucks, sucks. Before skill fusion, after skill fusion, there's still really no reason to use him. Gobta. I believe this is still to this day the only summonable Gobta. So yeah, go fuck yourself. 
Mirin. Very popular character. Okay. Hyper niche usage. Clayman. The first really big antagonist of the series. The finale of season two. Do I gotta say anything else? This one just came out not too long ago. And he's a free-to-play EX, technically. Gazzle. Again, super popular character. This is the only one we have. Summonable or free-to-play. He was like the first fucking banner. Yom. While not a top-tier character, I think he still deserves more than one summonable free-to-play EX. The Vengeance Yom is really good, but he's a free-to-play unit. My fucking foot's falling asleep. God damn it. Soka. Oh, Soka, you deserve so much better. Same with you, Ranga. You deserve so much better. Veldora. Three Veldoras. You know, the best friend of Rimuru Tempest, one of the most important characters in the entire series. The reason we have a series to begin with, because if it wasn't for him, Rimuru wouldn't be what he is today. Yeah, you get three units. And an admittedly good protector. I think he has like two. Neither one of them are bad. One of them's still really good to this day. But you get three mediocre battle units. That's all you get. Go fuck yourself. Velzard, similar situation. Veldora's sister. True Dragon. You get three mediocre battle units in three years. There is still, to this day, no EX Velzard battle unit. All of these are five stars. Gee Crimson, the head honcho of the Octogram, the primordial demon, the demon lord. Hyper situational, not good, but these two go in the positive outlier. These two are really good. This Gee specifically is still one of the best characters in the entire game. So it's like 50% sucks and 50% Really fucking good for no reason. Yuki deserves better. One EX battle unit. The other Yuki is a four star. Alice. I think all the kids. Alice is a stand in for all of the kids, really. They all deserve better. They were the entire focus of the finale of season one. And this is the only battle unit for any of the kids at a five star or higher level. Beretta. Also deserves better. The Overlord units. Now, I did not include Konosuba or Idolmaster because they're collab units. However, both of these teams, both of these teams down here are really good. What vendetta did they have against the Overlord characters? Specifically the characters. Not even the entire Overlord meta because Overlord Shizu up here is fantastic. And the Protector, Rimuru, is also fantastic. It's just the Overlord characters themselves, Ainz, Albedo, and Shaltir, that are below average. Ainz is competent if you build the right team around him, but he's a collab unit. He should be one of the best DPSs in the game. When Megamine came out, she was doing damage that rivals what characters were doing up until like a few months ago. Megamine was one of the most impactful DPS units ever. And while the Idolmaster team didn't technically have a DPS unit, it was supposed to be Mirai, but they're more of a defense team. They're really good at that fucking defense because they can't die. I don't know what type of vendetta they had against the Overlord units, but all three of them suck. I really like using Ainz, but that's because of my own bias towards him. Realistically, I'd never, if I wasn't a fan of Overlord, I would never use this damn Ainz. I only use him because I force myself to because I really like him. <laughs> I think we've gone over what the negative bias tier is all about. Reverse bias. Notice how Rimuru Tempest is in here. He's got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 units. 
more than anyone else. 14, in fact, because he's got one in the positive outlier. How many of them are good? Let's see. Decent. Good in Valor Cup. Okay. No. No. Good for one turn. Good for one turn. No. 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 If you have no other option. So of the 14 Rimarus we've got, there's two, three good ones? Diablo. One, two, three, four, five, six Diablos. Pretty good on release. Good, but you don't need him. Bad, terrible, unnecessary, bad. Luminous. Bad, situational, super situational. Bad, unnecessary, hyper situational. Trainee here is actually here for a different reason. There's only two trainees, despite her being a pretty big part of the story. But both of these trainees are stupidly good, especially um, the Earth trainee with her skill fusion. Like, the amount of trainees there are that, that are in the game would warrant them being in the negative bias tier. But the quality of these two units end up putting them in the reverse bias tier because they're just stupid. Now let's talk about the positive outliers. I want you to notice how Albus is in the positive outlier tier, despite there not being an Albus in either one of the other tiers. She's a positive outlier because she's the only fucking one. <laughs> she's he, even if she wasn't good, she'd be here by default. <laughs> it's like yes, I then I could say the same thing for Gobta, right? But Gobta has a really good free to play character. Albus doesn't <laughs> like her free to play four star protector is decent because of vengeance, but I can't exactly say that uh, that old, really, really, really old Earth Albus is doing anything for anyone. So, and this Albus is really good, so she gets to be in positive outlier simply because the rest of the versions of her aren't even in the fucking tier list. We already talked about Soe, Benimaru, and Gi. Fount of Wisdom Rimuru is without question the best of any of these Rimurus. Like, none of them even come close to the value that Fount of Wisdom Rimuru has had since his release. But let's talk about these three. You'll notice how Space Rimuru and Octogram Lumi are the only two skill fusions here. And Octogram Lumi just base is also in here. The reason I did not put the other skill fusions in here is because pretty much all of them would be in the negative bias tier. Because 98% of skill fusions are, are, are terrible. They're just bad. However, these two have skill fusions that are so far and away superior to every other skill fusion that they have to be in this tier. These are these the two best skill fusions in the game, and it's not even close. If the rest of these skill fusions were on the surface of the Earth, these two would be at the edge of the fucking universe. That is how much of a gap exists between these two and the rest of the skill fusions. It's almost insulting how much better these two are. And then Octogram Lumi, even without her skill fusion, is still just the best support unit in the game. Or at least one of them. She's up there. All in all, I think this tier list uh, method accurately gets across what I'm trying to point out. We need to stop getting Shunas. We need to stop getting Milims. In fact, if we went an entire calendar year without a single Milim, I would not be upset. We can we can do for a little while without any Shizus. I don't mind more Blanc or uh, more Violets and more Raphaels, but fucking relax with them please a little bit Hinata's I don't even I, I don't even think we don't need more Hinata's because another big problem with Hinata that almost got her put in the reverse bias tier is like 
none of them are really that great. Had it not been for the last three here, the uh, Wielder of Magic, Commander, and uh, Protector of Peace Hinatas, Hinata would have gone in the reverse bias tier. These three save Hinata as a character to get her put in positive bias. So, I mean, if you give us another Hinata, maybe make her actually good, like you did with those three. But every single character in the negative bias tier, we need more of. Every single one, all 28 of, well, 25, because we're never getting more Overlord characters. So all 25 characters up to that point, we need more of. Every single one of them. And make them good, damn it. Rimuru. We're going to continue to get more Rimurus. I'm not even going to bother trying to tell you to stop releasing Rimurus. But could you make one that's actually good? Please? Please. Could you make a Rimuru that's actually good? Give us more trainees. Give us a Luminous that's actually good. Give us a Diablo that's actually good. Give us more Albus. And don't ever make units like this again, please. Don't, don't, don't do it. Let me know what you guys think, though. Oh, God. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Uh, am I wrong? Do you guys think that uh, some characters down here deserve to be up here do you think Rimuru deserves to be in the positive bias again we do have a lot of Rimuru so I understand that argument but like most of them are bad or not like entirely useful same with Luminous we get a decent amount of Lumis but they're okay at best and here's the question of the day for you what one character of those in the negative bias tier do you want to see um uh, an ex unit an ex battle unit of the most but i will be doing a part two of this focusing on the protectors so if you enjoyed this video make sure to check that out when it comes out uh like subscribe all that nonsense and i will see all of you motherfuckers later peace